Today, I'm going to tell you a part of my story that you haven't heard. One of the questions that I get asked tons is about motivation. How do I stay motivated? How do I get motivated? What should I do? And I never know how to answer when somebody asks me that because motivation has never been one of my issues. I've always been crazy nuts driven. Now, if you'd ask me what it feels like to be broke, scared, and have your hopes and dreams collapse around you, I know how that feels. And so today I wanted to dive a little bit deeper, tell you about my past and some of my failures and ultimately my darkest moments. So as I've mentioned before, multiple videos, I didn't grow up with much money. My parents got together when they were like 19 and 20, had me, I was a mistake. Um, and you know, they did the best job they can, could. We, we lived in center city, Philadelphia. My dad went to school, we were on welfare. And the crazy thing is my earliest childhood memory was actually getting up in the middle of the night, walking out into the hall, because I went to go in my parents' bed every night, looking out into the living room and actually seeing a burglar. That was my earliest childhood memory. Um, it wasn't the best part of town, but we managed and we did the best we could. So fast forward a few years, it didn't work out with my parents and they got divorced. My mom was married two additional times. The first stepfather, I can't remember because I blocked it out. Um, not necessarily a good thing, or I don't know if it's good or bad. I, I just have blocked out a few years of my life, apparently. Um, the second one was, was pretty emotionally abusive. Um, he was just an asshole, to be honest. And uh, when I left for college at 18, I really, really didn't turn back. I never really went home after that. Um, subsequently, they got divorced as well, and so he's not in my life anymore, which is a good thing, but he was a dickhead. But we all have dickheads in our life. Um, but the one thing that my mom gave me when I was 13 was a gym membership. She gave me a fitness membership. And this was the one gift that changed my life and my passion, my comp, everything. It changed everything for me. Um, I loved it. I'd go to the gym. I might have a crappy home life, but when I went to the gym, I felt great about myself. I was, in, it, I was at home. And I knew from the age of 13 that that is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. I was going to own a fitness center. So how lucky was that, right? At the age of 13, you know what you want to do for the rest of your life. Well, it didn't turn out that way, but we'll get there in a second. Um, and so I went to West Virginia University after graduating, graduating high school. Um, I went for business management thinking that, hey, I needed a business degree in order to succeed at business and, and run my successful fitness center. My senior project in the business program was actually like you have to, you have to start a, a fake business and do all the financial and I did a fitness center of course. So I graduate from college, I'm broke, I've got student loans, and I move to Atlanta. And I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do or how I'm gonna to manage to open my fitness center, but I knew that Atlanta, good place to be. It was right after the Olympics and you know, lots of people were telling me it was a great location to start a business. So I moved here, first job was working at a health club called Bally's Fitness Center. Bally's Health Club, Bally's. They, I don't know if they're, they're probably still around. While I was there, I met a guy, his name was John. John wanted to open a nutrition store. He had a guy that he knew that would give him like $40,000. And he came to me and he was like, Aaron, do you want to start a nutrition store with me? I said, yes, absolutely yes. It wasn't a gym, but that's okay. I was getting closer. I was starting a business and I was going to gain a lot of experience through that. So we opened the nutrition store and it was pretty much successful right away. At the time, I wasn't making much money and the guy ultimately took very bad advantage of me and the main reason was because I was, I was incapable of standing up for myself at that point in my life. Um, and he was <laughs> kind of abusive as well. It's like all these people in my life from an early age um, did a number on my self-esteem, did a number on my confidence, did a number on my ability to actually stand up for myself. And so when I was there, I was having a lot of issues and I, I was just not happy. And so I took the first step to actually get help and I went and saw a counselor. And he really did some incredible work just helping me find my value. And that's really what happens. When you're around emotionally abusive people, your value is deteriorated. And 
you know, you start really second guessing your worth and, and if you're good enough and all, all that great stuff that comes along with it. And so, long story short, we opened two nutrition stores and I was just incredibly unhappy. And I knew that if I was going to feel better about myself, I needed to get out of that situation. Compound that with the fact that he was selling drugs out of the back of the store, it was my time to go because I didn't know much, but I knew that prison wasn't a place that I would do well. Popular? Yes. Well, absolutely not. And so I ended up quitting and I went to another fitness center and uh, got a job as a trainer. Well, one of the people that I met while I was at the nutrition store was a woman named Linda. And I helped Linda lose about 100 pounds and she got in the best shape of her life and it changed her life. It was a life-changing experience. And so she came to me one day and was like, Aaron, I want to help other people and I want to do sort of what you did for me. Would you want to open a gym with me or a personal training studio? Yes! One thing that probably should have been an omen to how this whole thing was going to unfold was the fact that we signed our lease for our location on September 11th, as in the September 11th. Um, and it was pretty much downhill from there. No. So we, we started a personal training studio. I was working a ton, but it didn't matter. I was in my element. I loved it. It was incredible. And we were having a good time. So we're running this fitness center and, you know, still not making much money. I think I was making like, what was it, like $24,000 a year, but it didn't matter because I was, I was happy. I was, I was doing something that I wanted to do from a really young age. Um, and one day we came up with the idea that we were going to expand and we came up with this fitness concept. It was a group fitness facility uh, for parents and kids. And, and um, we decided that that was going to be where we were going to make big waves and, and our fortune. And so we started putting together a plan. And this plan, and we were going to franchise these locations. It was a great idea and it was incredible and we were so excited and there was nothing I ever believed in more than that. And so we, we needed money because, you know, personal training studio wasn't doing all that hot. And, and in order to do what we needed to do, we needed money. And so we went out, we got investors, friends and family, and we went and got a bank loan for like $120,000. And so we started putting together our first location. Long story short, I'm sorry, this is probably dragging on you and uninteresting at this point. Um, we were running out of money really quick. Long story short, there was a big issue with, with one of our investors. I'm not saying who was at fault, but, but Linda and he had a, had a big falling out. So at that point, <laughs> everything's crumbling, right? The business, I mean, the writing's on the wall. It ain't happening for us. Um, we were out of money. There were legal issues. I was taking money off of my credit cards to pay my employees and the decision had to be made that we needed to shut down. Um, during this time, I actually, uh, and this is <laughs> part of the equation that, that I don't tell ever, um, but it's a critical component to sort of my story. During this time, I actually took a job driving a beer cart on weekends at a, at a country club just to make ends meet. Um, just so that I could eat, you know? And, um, and that was such a humbling experience and just one of those times, I remember it like it was yesterday. Um, drive it, it was, it was the middle of the winter and um, there I am driving a beer cart, a 30 year old guy, you know, has a business that he's trying to make work driving a beer cart and freezing temperatures and just sitting there and just thinking like, I was so scared, you know, because as the way I am, I never had like a plan B. I didn't have something to fall back on. I put every ounce of everything into that business and that dream from the age of 13 and it was crumbling. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do, you know. My world had collapsed and crumbled and there I am a 30 year old guy driving a beer cart <laughs> that's completely financially ruined and I didn't have a plan B. But it was at that precise moment that I realized that I would do whatever it took to be successful. The problem, I didn't know what success looked like anymore. And so 
ultimately it led me to starting an image consulting business and, and the rest is kind of history. But if it wasn't for that moment and if it wasn't for being down that low, I don't know that I'd ever have seen an opportunity and, and been able to open a window to get out of that burning building and do something amazing. And so I just wanted to do this video and sort of talk to you a little bit and tell you sort of a little bit more backstory on me. And so when you see me get emotional, when you see me like cry in videos and stuff like that, <laughs> It's because of how thankful I am that I'm as happy as I am. The other thing that's really hard about that time, sorry, is that I lost a best friend too. I, uh, the woman that that's, I started the business with, Linda, you know, I would have taken a bullet for her and she would have taken one for me, but it was so hard emotionally when that failed and that, that, that all happened that uh, I haven't spoken to her 10 years. She won't, she won't return my calls. She doesn't want to talk to me. And it's not that she doesn't like me. It's that it's just too painful. I wanted to do this video for those of you out there that might be struggling with something or you're in a bad place or you feel hopeless or lonely or lost or like you've got nothing or no one. I want to do this video to let you know that if you keep working and you don't give up, it gets better. Not only does it get better, it gets incredible. I am so incredibly lucky and fortunate. And the reason for the, for the tears and the emotion is because I am so thankful for each and every one of you, I am so thankful that I get to do this. I am so thankful that I've got the relationship that I do with you. And if my pain, my story, my hardship can benefit any one of you, let it be a lesson, man. It's worth it. So I guess I'm going to wrap this up just by letting you know this. I wouldn't for one second go back and change one single thing that's ever happened to me in my life. Um, all the negative, all the growing up without all the horrible failures and financial ruin, it all, I would do it in a heartbeat again and again and again and again. Because I really feel like it's those times that have built me into the person I am and give me the appreciation for what I have now. Um, I'm going to go through hard times in the future. So are you. And you just have to know that it will get better, it can get better if you keep pressing forward and persevering. So in conclusion, I don't know what it's going to take for you to find your passion, your motivation. I know what it took for me to find mine. And every single day I get up and say to myself, Aaron, don't fuck it up today because I know that it could get a whole lot worse. And so that's what I do every day. I try not to fuck it up, but I just want to tell you that you're incredible, that you can do anything. And if I can make it, so can you.